Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everybody here with us at Salmon Church. It's a, a special day for a lot of reasons. Obviously, this is homecoming day, but this is an even more special day because uh, we get to celebrate with Mila today. She uh, expresses her faith and the decision that she made here a few weeks ago. Uh, Mila finally made a decision she's been struggling with for a little while. She gave her her life to the Lord, and we're so proud of her today. She's made the decision to follow his command and his example in baptism, and that's what she's going to do today. So I can think of no greater way to start off her homecoming service by worshiping together with Myla and her baptism. Yeah. Following this express command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I baptize this, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Y'all want to rise to your feet as Matt comes. That's good stuff right there, ain't it? Good stuff. Thank you, brother. I almost forgot. How many is glad to be here this morning? Brown Hymnal, page 75. As you turn in there, turn around, wave at somebody, smile at them, tell them you're glad to see them. We'll sing uh, both verses to the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain cleansed by his blood join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side for I'm part of a family the family of God you will notice we say brother and sister around here it's because we're a family and these folks are so near when one has a heartache we all share the tear and rejoice in its victory in this family so dear i'm so glad i'm a part of the family of god i've been washed in the fountain cleansed by his blood join heirs with jesus as we travel this side for i'm part of a family the family of god from the door of an orphanage to the house of the king no longer an outcast a new song i sing from rags unto riches from the weak to the strong i'm not worthy to be here but praise god i belong i'm so glad i'm a part of the family of god I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sun. For I'm part of a family, the family of God. Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning. And I hope you've done that. I hope you've come with that spirit of worship. 
Let me just again say welcome if you're a guest here. We're delighted you made the decision to be here with us today. It is a special day. It's our homecoming service, obviously. We had baptism to, to start our worship service this morning. We're so delighted about that. It's also a, another type of special day. Today is a, a special day for, for multiple reasons. Brother Don, many years ago, before he was ever pastor here, was my pastor. And, and I know a lot of y'all have heard this, but Brother Don's who led me to the Lord. He baptized me whenever I was about the same age as Myla. And it's a special time for me to be able to allow him, ask him to, to come back and, and to be with us. I can remember when I first started preaching back before this sanctuary was built, Brother Don, very early on, asked me to come and to preach one Sunday night here at Salmon's, and it meant the world to me, and uh, over the time had opportunity to preach in this sanctuary as well. And it's, it's time for him to come home, and, and I'm glad that he's able to do that. So glad his family's here with him. Uh, I go back a long ways with, with Janet, and uh, obviously we're missing one member of their family, and, and y'all know we all miss Miss Francis and what a special lady she was, it meant so much to me and y'all as well. This time I'm going to ask Brother Don to come ahead. As he does that, if you would bow with me for another word of prayer. Lord and Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we just thank you again for this blessed opportunity we can come together and worship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for this time in which we've gathered for that that which we've celebrated already. Lord, I just pray right now, your hand be upon Brother Don, that you just might anoint him with your Holy Spirit, and he might speak the words that we need to hear. And Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit might move amongst us, it might make application of each and every word that he says in our hearts, and that you might draw us closer to you. Give us the boldness and the courage to respond as your Spirit calls. And we ask this and we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Wow, it's so good to, to be here today, to see a lot of people I know, have my family with me, uh, they, they surprised me, so I didn't know I was going to get this emotional, but I'm glad to have them with us today, and with me, and it's good to be in God's house, great, great job, you guys singing, and it's just so good to see so many people that we know, and I think now, I think I'm right. This is the first time I've preached here in 20 years. I think it's right. I don't think I've been back since we left for the mission field. So uh, it's good to be here today. You pray for us as we try to share from the Word of God. Turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. And now I'm nervous as a long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs. So you guys better pray good. That's all I can tell you. You just better pray good that that I'll just share what God wants me to share. Get me out of the way and let God speak and speak to our hearts today. And I'm going to read one verse of Scripture from Ephesians chapter 6. It says in chapter 6, verse 16, or first, verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Let's pray. Father, we love you, praise you, thank you, God, for the day. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to stand and, and preach your word and share your word. I ask you, God, to anoint me and bless me and help me, God, to share what you've laid on my heart. For I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, there was a guy that this happened to him one day. Uh, uh, true story. He got up one morning and his refrigerator was on the blink. The, the defroster wasn't working, so he got that fixed. Then uh, his well pump went out, and he got that fixed. Then the alternator on his car <laughs> went out, and he fixed that. And he came in that evening and sat out on, he had an old 19-inch black and white TV. He turned that on, walked across the room, sat out on the couch, and about that time it went boom, and smoke blew out of it. Now, that was a rough day. And I know it's a true story because it happened to me. <laughs> it happened to me. Uh, and we know today that, that life is not always easy, isn't it? 
Uh, there are difficulties and trials in life that we face. Uh, uh, disappointments. And if we're going to make it through life, we need something bigger than ourselves to help us get through it. And that's what I want to talk about today. We need, we need wisdom, first of all, don't we? To understand the things that's happening to us. And, and wisdom on how to fight the good fight of faith. And Paul, writing here to the Ephesians, said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Now, and then in this passage of Scripture, he lists some obstacles uh, I'll never say it right for Janet, uh, that we face in life. And one of them is, is the wiles of the devil. And that word wiles means schemes. And how, how many of you know that the devil's a schemer? He's a schemer. He, 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 he doesn't fight fair. He, he, he attacks us in our weak moments. He attacks us when we're unsuspecting. And, and sometimes when everything's going good, all of a sudden he, he comes on the scene and he attacks us and tries to get us to be discouraged in our life. And then the Bible here talks about the principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of his age and spiritual host of wickedness. And that's, that's our spiritual opponents. That, that's, that's when the devil comes after you and he oppresses your spirit so that you get up in the morning and still getting up and saying, good morning, Lord, you get up and say, good Lord, it's morning, you know. And another day that I got to go through. And I tell the people at my church, you know, some days you're the bug and some days you're the windshield, you know. And so you don't feel good every day as a child of God. And the devil comes along and he oppresses us. And then there's the evil day, the day of trial and temptation, the day of, of uh, opposition and spiritual attack. And then Paul, later on in this chapter, talks about wanting boldness to speak the word of God. And so we find ourselves sometimes being very timid when it comes for us to stand up to God. Anybody ever been there? When you, you knew you should have spoken up, when you should have spoken up, and after it's all over with, you sort of, you know, sort of kick yourself for saying, I did not do what God asked me to do. And so Paul talks to the people there, and he says, pray for me that I might have boldness to speak the word of God. And boldness doesn't always mean loudness. Boldness is just speaking the right word at the right time, the way God wants you to. And so Paul was right in prison when he wrote this, and it would have been very easy for him to back up and said, well, I better back up a little bit. I'm in prison. If I want to get out of here, I need to back up on my testimony for God. And so that's what he's talking about, being bold to speak the word of God. And so we have some things in our life that, that we have to fight against. And this young lady that just got baptized today, isn't that a great thing? That's a good thing. Uh, that's a good thing. And she's going she's to have a fight in her life for God. She's going to have to learn to fight the good fight of faith. And she's going to grow up, and you, church, have to help her do that. Amen? You have to help her to fight that good fight of faith. And so when, when we think about these things that we have to overcome in life, and then the Bible here tells us that we have some enemies. How many of you know you've got an enemy? Name is Satan. The Bible says he is the adversary of our souls. He's the one who fights against God. You know, the devil hates you because you're made in the likeness and the image of God. He hates you. And he hates everything that God has and everything that God does. He hates that. And he hates you because if you're a child of God, you belong to God. And you've been, been reborn. And so we have an enemy called the devil who walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And then the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, 16, says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You ever find yourself going along, and one day you wake up and you say, How did I get here? How did I get this far off track? How did I get to this point? I was going along good, and, and then you just sort of wake up a little bit, and you find out, Hey, my attitude's all bad. And my, my outlook is not good. And I'm not where I need to be with God. And so that's, the, that's the, the, the fleshly part of us. That's that man part, that human part of us that we have to fight with. And then there's that part of us that wants comfort and security. Hmm. Boy, it's a tough one, isn't it? We want to be comfortable. We don't want to have to suffer. We don't want to have to get uncomfortable for Christ. We, we, we want our comfort. I mean, how many of you like comfort? I do, don't you? I mean, I liked it last night 
when it got down to 33 and I was in my house and it was warm and, and, and I was cozy under my blanket and I hated to get up this morning. But, uh, but, it, but, but we, don't, we, we don't want that part that causes us to want, have to suffer for Christ. And we want to be comfortable. But listen to what Jesus said. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. And so this is the battle that we have. All these things that are contrary to the things of God that seek to overtake us and overwhelm us. And so, and yet Paul here is saying, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. How can I be strong in the Lord? How can I overcome? How can I be that more than the conqueror that the Bible says I am uh, in this battle? And so we find out that, first of all, we're not defenseless in this spiritual warfare because it says be strong in the Lord not in yourself but in the Lord not in me but in Jesus I'm in strong in the Lord you know you ever hear two kids saying uh, my daddy's bigger than your daddy my daddy's smarter than your daddy uh, my daddy's uh, 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 stronger than your daddy I heard about these three little boys talking one time one of them said my daddy is a, is a lawyer, and he makes tons of money. And, and the other kid, his, dad, his daddy was a doctor, and he said, my daddy is a doctor. He makes more money than your daddy. And the other guy, he, the other little boy, his, his daddy was a pastor. He said, I don't know how much my, money my daddy makes, but it takes eight men to carry it out of the church every Sunday. So the Bible says we need to be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. So what, what assurances do I have that I can be strong in the Lord? First of all, there's the promise of His presence. He said, I will not leave you orphans. I will not leave, but I will come to you. And you sang a song a little bit ago about how that God comes to us in our darkest hour when it seems like there's no hope, when it seems like there's no way out, when it seems like there's not going to be a way that the Lord can come at the most unexpected moments in their life. And you think, why didn't I think about that? Why wasn't I expecting him to come? But he comes. And he comes and he strengthens us and helps us in our walk with him. He has promised to come where we are and to help us. And you know something? That Jesus has never broken a promise. He's never broken a promise. He will always keep his promises. He said, I will not leave you orphans. Then in Matthew 28, 20, he says, I'm with you always. There used to be a song a long time ago. It's called Never Walk Alone. I'll never walk alone. And you never walk alone. If you're a child of God today, you're never alone. The psalmist said, though I go to the high mountain, God's there. If I make my bed in the depths of the sea, God's there. He said, even in the grave, I cannot escape the presence of God. And so you're never alone. We may feel alone, but we're never alone because he's always with us. Somebody say amen. And then in Hebrew 13, 5, it says, let your conduct be without covetousness and be with content with the things that you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I heard a story one time about a young Indian brave that he was going to go through this ritual of becoming a man. And part of it was that he would have to spend the night in the forest alone. And so his dad took him out to the forest at dusk and set him down there at the base of a tree and said, I'll be back in the morning to get you. And so he sat there all night long. And he heard all the sounds of the forest. And he was afraid. He, he, was, he was so afraid he, he couldn't even move. And it seemed like it would take forever for the daybreak to come. And when the daybreak come and the dawn began to come and the light came up, he looked over and he could see a figure right at the edge of the forest. And he said, is that, is that a warrior? Is that somebody come to take me away? Is that my enemy? And as the light got brighter and brighter, he found that it was his dad. His dad had never left him. He'd been there all the time. Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will come to you. I, I will minister to you. I'll lift your spirit. I'll help you in your life. And then there's the promise of his provision, the promise of his presence and the promise of his provision. 
He said, Paul said, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. Now, Paul was speaking from personal experience. He was in a, he, he, he was in a, 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 a he had, he experienced God's provision for his life many times. And he, he, he knew that God could make the need in his life. He could meet the need of his life. No matter what your need is, God is going to make a way for you. Single mother, God can make a way for you. My mom raised five of us, and she never had any help from our dad. He never gave us a Christmas present. He never sent a birthday card, and she worked in an old shirt factory, and she got paid once a month. And uh, our treat was she would bring in a, a bag of vanilla wafers. You remember when you get those big, big, big bag of vanilla wafers? And, you know, we, we jumped on them like termites on a two before. They lasted about five minutes. But, but, my, but we never went hungry. And I believe there was a lot of times that God made a way for my mom and way, made a way for my grandparents to help us to have the things that we need in life. If you're a single mother today, God will make a way for you. He will help you. He will, he will give you grace and strength. He'll make a way for you. Maybe you're a dad that you want to live for God and provide for your family, and God will make a way. I remember one time when Janet was just a little bitty girl, and I was between jobs. And I went into this factory, and uh, I said, man, I need a job. And I filled out an application, and when it was over with, uh, the guy looked at me, and he said, uh, sorry, we don't have anything. And I was standing there, and I remember it. Uh, I had my hand laid up on a filing cabinet, and Janet and Francis was in the car. And he, somebody come in from out the factory, and he turned around talking to them. I said, God, I need a job, and I need one today. And when that guy turned around, he looked at me in the face, and he said, when, you, can, when can you start? When can you start? I said, whenever you want me to start. He come be in here Monday morning. You see, God will make a way. And God has many times, God has made a way for us. He put food on our table, clothes on our back. I, he had called me to go to college. And we, we went up there, and I was going to school from 8 to 12 every day and working every afternoon and going back to school at night. And we didn't have any money. And we, I, we would come home and find groceries on our doorstep. And people would send us money. God make a way. God will make a way. He'll meet your need no matter what it is. If you're a widow and you're alone, the Bible says he's a father to the fatherless and a defender of widows. And my, my grandmother raised me the most, most of my life. And she, I've seen her go to church and give her last dollar to church. Because she loved God and because she wanted to do something God wanted to do. And God made a way for us. And so there's a promise of his presence. And there's a, there's a promise of his provision. And then there's the promise of his power. Ephesians 3, 6, if you have your Bible, just turn over there right real quick. And we want to look at this. And I know I'm not going to keep you long. I hear stomachs growling already, okay? The promise of his power. Paul praying for the Ephesians, said that God would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. And notice what he says, that God would grant you. It's something that's given by grace. It's not something you earn. They sang about it a while ago. Again, God has forgiven me. God has come where I am, and I'm not deserving of it, but his grace is there, that God would grant you by his grace. It's not earned, but it's needed. The riches of his glory, that is the unlimited, all-sufficient grace of God that's sufficient for every need to be strengthened with might in the inner man. And isn't that where we need to be strengthened? In the inner person. You know, just as the outer man needs exercise and nourishment every day, so the inner man needs nourishment. And through God's Spirit, He can strengthen us. It's not of man. It's not of man's philosophy. This is something that only God can do. Have you ever been down and low as a snake's belly in a wagon rut? I've been there. And then you read the Word of God. And God speaks something to your spirit. And all of a sudden, all the problems are gone. The, the difficulty has gone. And you begin to rejoice in God. And you know He's there. You know He's your friend. He's going to help you. He's going to strengthen you in your life. That's what God can do. 
in the inner man, God can strengthen us today. So we have the promise of his presence, the promise of his provision, and the promise of his power. It's His grace through every trial, the strength to endure, through every disappointment, the ability to overcome. So the Bible says that through this Jesus Christ, we can be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And we can overcome and we can have grace and strength. And we're going to be able to overcome life that the devil throws our way. And so the Bible says we're more than conquerors through Him. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm more than a conqueror. Just tell them, I'm more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. And, and so God gives grace. And you know what God does? He uses the weakest of us to do the greatest things through. It's not through my power, not through my ability. I, I hope I'm not preaching in my power today. I hope God is speaking to your heart today because he, God takes us who are flesh and he uses us and he can use you and he can help you. To be more than a conqueror through Christ who loves us. So that the excellency may be of Christ and not ourselves. So that when the enemy is defeated, Christ is glorified and not us. That, that we don't take it on ourselves, but we glorify God. So, the Bible here says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And it starts with the idea that I can be strong in the Lord. I want you to close your eyes a minute. And I want you to just say to yourself, I can be strong in the Lord. I can be strong in Him. And it finishes with the assurance that I will trust in the Lord who has promised, number one, to never leave me. That's a good assurance, isn't it? That you can never be alone. And a promise of God that says He'll meet all my needs according to His grace and glory. All my needs that He has. Whether it's a financial need, physical need, relational need, spiritual need, whatever it is, God can meet all our needs according to His riches and glory. And He can make me more than a conqueror through Him who loves me. Now these singers are going to come here in a minute. I'm going to ask them to come. And we're going to give an invitation today. And Listen to me. Maybe you're in this place today. Maybe you can say, Lord, I'm going to trust you today with something I've been trying to do on my own. I'm going to trust you today with a burden that I've been trying to carry myself. Or maybe you say, Lord, I've been trying to do this in my own strength, but now I give it to you. Most of you know that know me, know that Francis died back in January. It's not been easy. It's been tough. But this morning I was talking to God. And I said, God, I want you to help me to rejoice for her. I want you to help me to rejoice for her and not be sorry for me. Because I know where she is today. She's in a good place. She's not hurting anymore. She's happy and old. Maybe today you've been trying to do something on your own strength. And you need to say, Lord, I want to do it in your strength. And Maybe today you say, Lord, I'm going to be strong in you in the power of your might. I'm going to trust you to give me the grace that I need that I can overcome in Jesus' name. And Lord, I'm going to start trusting you and not me. I'm going to ask you to stand if you will. Pastor, you come. And singers, you come. If you need to come and pray today, the Bible says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If you need to bring something to Jesus today, I know pastor will come and help you pray. Others will come and with you and pray. If you're saying, I just need to turn something over to God, I just need to give it to him, then you can do that today. We beg you to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture says, greater love hath no man than this. He laid down his life for his friends. Aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful that the Lord did that for us? And that's what He expects of us, to live a life of, of sacrifice for Him. Appreciate the music today. Appreciate Living Proof coming and sharing with us. And, and so much appreciate Brother Don coming and breaking the bread of life and sharing with us uh, the Word of God. Hope that the Lord has spoke to you today. And if He has, you don't have to leave the same way you came. You, you still have opportunity. So if today you need to come and and just talk to somebody, if you've got questions, if you've got concerns, if you need prayers for something, come and and, and find myself, Brother Don, anybody. Just just grab somebody and come up after service would be counted a privilege.
to, to be able to speak with you today.